Hello everyone, my name is Miklos Benz and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to hand paint this fantasy dagger uh, which is on the screen right now. This is going to be the end result uh, which uh, we are going to paint right now. So let's jump right in. Here uh, I'm already started out with a little bit of uh, local colors and uh, little bit of material definition here and there. Um, what I did basically is just go into Photoshop, um, select the shapes I knew I wanted to uh, use and uh, paint the different parts of the model accordingly. Like the fangs are yellow, yellowish brown right now, really desaturated and uh, the painted metal is red and the uh, handles, handle, there is some little bit of wood there, it's not visible right now, but it's going to be. And after that I just basically jumped into 3D code and baked an ambient occlusion. Uh, I'm sure you can Google it and find it how to do that, it's um, really, really easy. Uh, just two clicks, basically. And after that, just jump right in, collapse all the layers into one so it's not going to be distracting. Uh, you can also see uh, a wireframe on top which I made with 3ds Max because yeah I used 3ds Max for modeling this dagger and I rendered out the UV for the texture so I can put it on top which is called SCR right now and it's on like really low opacity just f so I can see where is, where is uh, uh, planar changes in the model and where to paint edges and stuff. Uh, yeah, basically in this phase you just really want to focus on big, big forms uh, which you modeled out. Right now nothing, uh, nothing small, nothing, uh, no scratches, nothing happening right now, just figuring out where the light is coming from uh, and how it's hitting the model. Uh, well, uh, I usually put uh, light, the light source on uh, above the dagger, I mean above the weapon, but right now I decided to move it in my head um, basically to the end of the, to the tip of the dagger and towards the camera a little bit in a 45 degree angle so that way uh, that's it's going to uh, result in really interesting and uh, nice shadowy um, and uh, I mean nicely defined shapes so what uh, basically is the idea is just keep the lightning in mind uh, and where it's going to hit the model like the at this stage um, the main focus should be just giving weight and finding um, giving weight to the texture and finding big shapes and how they look like you can see in the, on the fangs um, that on the side I mean on the top and bottom side they are a little bit darker and the plane that's, that's facing us uh, it's a little bit brighter and that way we can already understand that these these fangs are in in space. I mean, they have dim dimensions dimensions to them. Uh, also on the red metal parts, uh, where the f there is also some kind of uh, fang shape going on. You can see right now on the left side it's a little bit brighter, and on the right side it's a little bit more dark. And that way you can already understand that the light is coming from the tip of the dagger. Also, uh, at this stage you really don't want to zoom in, keep it far away uh, and think about uh, big shapes and how, it's, how the weapon is going to look like from far away. Because at this stage, uh, if you make any big mistakes, it's going to 
be really hard to fix later on so really just take your time and think about the big shapes and what kind of uh, light you light source you have and uh, establish these things really really well early on so you don't have to uh, mess up your details um, later because like na right now uh, the eye is in a shadowy place uh, you can see that there is a uh, like kind of uh, a deep cut <laughs> going on in the model I'm painting that area right now it's a big shadow and you can already feel that uh, that part is is not not uh, I mean that part is in shadow and uh, that's going to give weight to the texture if you paint that, that kind of stuff in also you can see it on the on the metal part as well which where, where the fangs are coming out from that at the end of the dagger it's really bright but at the supposed uh, mouth I mean the jaw area of this uh, oh so yeah this is supposed to be a, some kind of crocodile type t creature I don't know if it's uh, visible or understandable but you know whatever so what I was saying that at the nose, basically at the end of the dagger, tip of the dagger, the metal part is brighter and at the jaw area it's much much darker. It's not going to be that much that, that visible from middle and close view because you are too close to notice the big gradient change in the light but if you look at the dagger from far away you will instantly notice that there is a, some kind of light change happening from the end of the dagger to the middle part and that's going to give in my opinion a little bit of weight and a little bit of uh, visual interest to your model uh, right now I moved in for the straps a little bit uh, you can see I just made a new layer painted in roughly, really roughly and loosely uh, some uh, lines to represent uh, some kind of clothing going on and just leave it there not not uh, detailing it out too much because that's uh, that's something always to keep in mind to keep it really loose in the end and don't get carried away with one part because that's uh, it's a little bit dangerous and um, mm, not really productive uh, oh and yeah basically this video is just going to be about some general stuff and exploring and showing you my own way how I like to work but always uh, approach these things with an open mind and see what is working for you and what is not because some people like to paint in colors first some people like to paint in uh, monochrome and grayscale you just see what you what kind of uh, approach you enjoy and explore it use it shape it and add new information to it and basically just have as much fun as you can don't uh, apply anyone else's work method just because it is said so that open-minded um, approach in mind just basically um, pick up the things you think I do well and um, the things you think I uh, I mean the things you think you would enjoy this way as well and leave out the stuff that is uncomfortable for you or uh, not logical but yeah so anyway just right now I'm uh, I decided to break up the forms uh, because you know I already have uh, established some general shapes uh, which uh, is really just I can't emphasize this enough uh, really really establish these things uh, early on and uh, think about it and and uh, just uh, keep it keep it uh, consistent all over the model 
anyway after that you uh, with basically the same principle uh, just on a different scale break up the big forms into medium sized forms also keeping uh, lightning in mind um, because oh what so my screen just went totally black but it's not a problem anyway uh, where was I hmm. oh yeah so breaking up big forms into smaller smaller forms like um, where the where the little bit of red fangs is coming out I just painted in some uh, bevels I mean some cuts and that way the big really big red part uh, is now divided into smaller smaller parts mm, but mm, you also mm, have to do the same approach uh, when you break up the forms uh, just uh, keep in mind that uh, just because it's a medium sized uh, shape uh, the same principles and uh, uh, same approach applies as well just just like in uh, in in the big shapes so anyway uh, some loose scratches put I put in there some smaller details sometimes I just can't help myself and put them in there so anyway I'm just uh, a little bit hungover right now so it's hard to focus but I will try and keep it uh, <clears throat> as simple and then as understandable as possible but it's uh, it's uh, it, it does have a high chance that I'm going to repeat myself all over again all over again and uh, maybe not talk up talk about some stuff that I should but anyway uh, noticed that there is uh, some kind of uh, problem going on with uh, with two big shapes where the blade and the handle is meeting and I just quickly fixed it always keep keep your uh, eye open uh, for mistakes like that because Mm, we are all human and we make mistakes but if you sometimes zoom out the model flip out the mod flip uh, the texture I mean look at uh, the other side of the model you can uh, check it out with a fresh eye and you will maybe notice a really big thing you left out and you can fix it before it's uh, too late or it's too big of a mistake right now I'm moving on a little bit on the handle handles and painting in some uh, scratches and details um, um, to break up the form a little bit mm, yeah what you can also keep in mind is uh, edges are important to sometimes mm, to emphasize them like at the end of the dagger where there is that bone part and that two box like shapes I uh, painted on the edge with a little bit of brighter color so it's uh, understandable where the end of the, my, the end of the um, shape is and where the object is turning when the where the ge ge geometry is turning uh, it's of it's all for readability so the player or the viewer can understand that okay so this is a box shape uh, if we est establish that with the lightning in mind and okay so this box shape have some kind of edges so it may be it's a used some kind of thing with some damages on on it and after that we will move on to defining materi materials so um, the viewer will understand that this is a metal thing 
but not right now we are just I mean I'm just laying off uh, laying on some scratches and some kind of neat details to um, sell the model on a medium level I mean in a medium distance uh, because that's all also a good idea to keep in mind that distance is a big role as well you have to you have to make the dagger uh, visually pleasing from far away from middle distance and from close up because if you see somebody a gladiator or some kind of uh, dude running towards you from really far away with this dagger you will have to be able to tell oh that's a nice dagger that that must be an epic loot or something and it has to be uh, it have to be really really nicely painted and visually interesting from far away but also it has to be uh, interesting when it's uh, in your forehead so keep that in mind uh, with all aspects of painting uh, textures um, also just putting in some scratches to make it interesting from uh, I mean in the middle middle zone um, yep uh, yeah and I made the mistake uh, of making the red a little bit too uh, monochrome but you can fix it by mm, well it's a general problem with digital painting I believe that if you just pick one color and it's easy to paint with it because there is not going to be any variation in the color by itself so you have to manually put color variation in there and uh, keep that it, keep that in mind always um, also what I should have done is basically select out the red parts when I establish the colors and just not use a monochrome uh, color uh, but instead use many different colors but uh, I discovered <laughs> this mistake when I painted the model and uh, I put in some uh, that desaturated uh, red and some brown yellowish things and purple as well just keep it really subtle because the problem is fixing color variations later is that when you paint it in it's not that visible uh, but if you paint it in a way that it's visible then it's going to be too much so there is a fine line where it's not distracting but interesting so um, I have not figured out a measurement for it I just look at it and um, uh, check it if I think it's right or not but basically if it's uh, you can already you can tell that it's red uh, but if you look closely you see color variation in it then you are on the right track I believe so right now just jumping all over the place mm, figuring out uh, some kind of details to put in there mm, at some point I just basically move away move away from uh, the, the original concept um, but I believe I'm going to keep uh, close to it for a while now uh, anyway um, just defining where edges meet also um, a good idea um, and something I usually do is um, for example on the bone parts I picked the color the red color from the darkest place uh, on the painted metal and use that to paint in the ambient occlusion uh, where the bone and the painted metal meet that way some kind of color bleed will occur so where the bone and painted metal meet uh, the bone is going to be a little bit more red and more uh, more filled with life 
Anyway, um, I believe I am gonna start pick breaking up um, the surface because the, uh, right now uh, at this stage I already established the forms uh, at the light. I have the light in mind. I have the forms placed. I break up the big forms into smaller forms put on some scratches to the model and after that you I mean I usually like to think about how to make it more interesting and I believe that one big flat uh, color is not that visually interesting so uh, I try to break up Hmm. I try to bake up uh, the forms, I mean the surface, with uh, surface detail, so like um, bevels and chipped off uh, paint. Also you can see on the bone that there is a surface detail, like a s little bit of, mm, I don't know, uh, inner scratches, some kind of craters, like on the moon, <laughs> but in a bony way. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know if I talked about this, but it's a good idea to keep, keep your eyes out mm, for design changes as well, mm, like that bone part uh, next to the eye. Uh, you just discover that, oh, so right now it's uh, important I made a new layer, put it in overlay and use a big brush with zero hardness uh, and paint all over the model and make the lightning lighting a little bit more dramatic because it was a little bit soft. This uh, it's always good idea to keep it keep things subtle, uh, subtle and uh, you know a little bit little bit laid back in the first phase and the beginning when you're not really sure where to put uh, uh, details and forms and when you're basically satisfied how it looks just push the shapes even further and just check check how how you can make it more interesting and more understandable mm. uh, and zoom out always zoom out to from the from if you are close uh, if you're painting really closely just zoom to the middle area if you're painting in the middle area go zoom out really far away and think try and use a fresh eye uh, and figure out what to change also uh, in right now I'm continuing with uh, the surface detail um, and putting in some bruises and uh, and stuff on the metal and on the bone a mm, little bit of dots a little bit of stuff like that uh, so it's it has to be really subtle it don't uh, you don't want to make it has as dark as a, a scratch, but it, it has to be visible. Like I said, if uh, it's stabbed into your chest, you really want to be able to admire the little fine details that it's put in there. So, that concept in mind, I'm just putting in some dots and um, I, I really don't know what to call them, but um, when I look at uh, a surface like um, on wood or metal, uh, what I find more interesting is if there is some kind of uh, bumpy surface to them, not just uh, a flat surface. So that's what I try to keep in mind as uh, as I paint uh, metal. Uh, metal. Mm, right now I'm painting the wood a little bit. Mm, also discover that that one also lacks uh, color variation so I put some in there a little bit what looks good on wood I discovered is 
basically picking up the color and really desaturate it and paint it in uh, paint it back in in some places and that's going to make it really just more alive um, also when painting colors it's a good idea to keep in mind that in the shadows um, I uh, usually it's what I like to do is uh, pump up the saturation when I move into the shadows and make them more colorful than on the highlights. Uh, I know some people like to desaturate the mm, the colors as they move into the shadow, but for me it's uh, uh, more more visually pleasing color-wise if there is a hue a little bit of hue shift in the shadows and mm, and uh, make them a little bit more saturated as in the light lighted area yeah just keep nature in mind always um, never never I, I, I uh, tend to use <coughs> color variations much uh, a lot because if I look at wood or anything in nature I never never see a, a big one colored patch on like a bark of the tree there are many many little subtle color variations just apply the same principle when painting in colors and you're going to be uh, all good all groovy. Um, hmm. Yeah, I left out ambient occlusion from the part I added later on. Mm. There is always the possibility for that, mm, that you leave out some phase uh, of the texturing at different part of the model. <laughs> always try and uh, keep in mind the earlier earlier phases as well and like zoom out and check out okay so is ambient occlusion uh, applied nicely all over the model and if you check check it out and go through the model you will usually find places where you left it out or it's not uh, strong enough and just yeah basically the same principle with light think about oh is every object on my model i mean every geomet geometry on my model showing where the light is coming from and the uh, answer will usually be no because there is always some kind of mistake on the texture keep that in mind always fix it and never be afraid to experiment uh, and uh, go back and change things up which you don't like because it's you as as i maybe already said just make a new layer paint it <coughs> if you don't like it delete it that's it not a big deal but if you don't experiment and don't try new things in your approach you will never never really improve uh, i mean you will but more slowly so experiment, don't be afraid and check it out if maybe this dagger would have been more uh, visually pleasing if the red metal parts would have been pink and uh, fangs would have been um, radioactive green but you know, who knows, I didn't try that one but maybe it's a bit radical but you know what I mean so right now I have to be honest with you guys um, I struggled with this red metal part a little bit because I made the mistake and didn't uh, figure out and establish what kind of material I, wa I wanted it to be uh, I wanted it to be 
and basically at some point I decided oh it's going to be a red metal and it's going to be as shiny as the metal around it it's going to have nice highlights and it's gonna gonna be reflective reflective and stuff but at some point the video I just decided that no it's going to be a, f a little bit it's going to be painted metal and uh, the paint is going to chip off at some part showing that it's basically the same metal, same metal as the other metal parts on the on the dagger but it's painted so you will see it that I will paint uh, in some details that will be deleted right when I finish them uh, also what's a good idea after I push my mouse because the screensaver kicked in again uh, what a good idea a good idea is to um, gather reference and inspiration maybe at the earlier stage when you start out hand painting hand painting textures you don't really have like your own style or something so it's just going go on to the magical place called the internet and discover new people who like to paint this kind of stuff and see how they um, how they define bone or some stuff like that but you can also just uh, google some images and um, check what kind of detail bone have in real life and try and stylize it and apply it to your model and define it for your own taste um, for this one I didn't really use any reference other than my uh, concept I made but I'm sure I seen this kind of bone pattern somewhere uh, and also um, it's a good idea to just check check how other people's other how other people experiment how other people express their uh, you know own style in texturing so you may be uh, get inspired to experiment with something new right now uh, a good riddle detail is to put in uh, reflections and that's what you can see where the metal is meeting with the red area and the basically where two metal parts meet that I put in some kind of bright uh, light right where they meet and that's going to read as it's it's as it's reflecting the color uh, from the surrounding textures I mean surrounding uh, geometry yeah like right now I'm just painting in some reflection mm, that's going to sell that part a little bit more like metal um, but you have to really keep it subtle you cannot go it uh, go crazy with it because that way it's going to read as highlight it's gonna confuse the, the viewer or the player mm. but if you keep it loose and keep it uh, subtle it's going to be fine and then it's going to improve your metals a lot so keep that in mind mm. right now I just ran out things of things to say so I'm just gonna watch what kind of uh, horrible crime I'm committing on the screen right now maybe something will come to mind oh yeah pay for example where mm, the red fangs meet the metal it's mm, good idea to express how two things are connected like the red metal thing is not just laying on top of the mat uh, on top of the brown metal I painted in some uh, edges and, and uh, and bevels so that way you understand that the red metal thing is uh, is um, how to say it it's in the in the in the metal below it 
so it's not just floating above the two things have connection between them uh, and that's gonna add further visual interest to your model as well uh, I realized that there is not many uh, interesting thing going on with the big uh, metal metal thing uh, so I added some scratches also you can notice that the uh, ge geometry is a little bit jagged why oh, I don't know how to say it uh, a little bit messed up but Mm, I will fix it later on in 3ds Max and re-export the model uh, and I uh, I believe there was some kind of UV problem also yeah mm, this is what I was talking about I was thinking that okay so it's going to be just as shiny and just as uh, yeah, same material as the other metal parts but somehow mm, I wasn't really feeling it so I will go ahead and delete it may just soon as I finish it but that's exactly what I was talking about don't be afraid to experiment and check out the things you think will work oops and um, if it's not working delete it uh, I also would like to talk about like uh, I'm using a genius tablet for this one it's a total piece of uh, crap but it gets the job done so I don't want to hurt his feelings or anything but he is a little bit uh, rusty but I would recommend buying an Intuos tablet if you want to uh, uh, that that uh, that works fine really fine I mean really nicely um, also I'm using shortcuts uh, the same shortcuts I use in Photoshop I defined the 3D code shortcuts as well. I'm using the tablet to rotate the dagger around and switch between color picker and brush basically. What I do here right now is just press Ctrl P on your keyboard and that's going to open up your texture in Photoshop um, and there you can basically experiment move hue saturation press ctrl s and clo close it up and uh, it's going to re-export your texture into 3d code instantly but it was basically pointless because i turned off that layer immediately didn't like where that was going to take me so i decided to chip off some of the paint on this metal part uh, and show the same material as the outer metal things on the model and I believe that's going to give a nicer overall more nice feeling to the texture mm, let me just do this real quick yeah so <coughs> painting in the chipping off part that I was talking about and yeah what is basically a good idea to keep in mind is <laughs> as above so below you know um, the same ideas you I mean the same ideas I uh, used when I painted the big forms is are exactly the same ideas I'm using when I'm painting the smaller uh, details just keep in mind lightning and form because if you paint a scratch uh, just with one brush stroke that's going to be fine I mean you basically you added nice detail but if you want to bring it to the next level think about scratches as different forms as well and give weight and dimensions to them also uh, I decided that I will turn on my uh, highlights I added to the red areas just so I can watch how horrible it looks and leave it on for some part of the video 
to make you guys think that it's going to be that way but it's just a trick I'm going to turn it off sometime soon and I believe I just uh, forgot that I turned it off and yep now I realize that it was on and I turned it off again so anyway uh, sometimes these kind of things happen to me but uh, that's how it is <laughs> just keep in mind that nobody is perfect <laughs> neither am I neither I am so I just uh, usually try and check my workflow the best I can and uh, see what I did well in one particular um, asset and see what I did badly and see what by what kind of uh, workflow I enjoyed and see what I didn't and mix them together combine them and next time I won't make the same mistake I will approach it from an other angle and uh, the overall enjoyment will be much higher and the end result will be much more um, good <laughs> much more visually pleasing yeah anyway that's a good idea to self reflect sometimes uh, okay so I'm painting um, highlights I never I didn't talked about I didn't talk about them yet I believe so at metal you when you paint metal you just try and keep in mind that um, there is there are many highlights uh, happening where mm, there are sharp edges and that's going to give nice metal feel to your texture where you want uh, what is a good idea is just take a really bright color and desaturate it as much as uh, you find it visually pleasing and apply it to really small in really small doses because if you to apply too much highlight to on, on too many places it's going to really just um, destroy destroy your model and uh, um, br bring the eye um, I mean the texture will be too busy uh, yeah that's, that's what I'm trying to say you just uh, try and keep it as simple as possible yet as interesting as possible it's a fine balance there I don't know if I got this particular dagger right in that aspect but it's easy to go too over detailed and it's really easy to go too under detailed just um, what I had in mind with this one is basically I want to have the focus on the eye of the crocodile and uh, make it make it the center of attention that's why there that's uh, that's where the hu the biggest contrast is on the weapon if you squint your eyes the and see see the texture you will see that uh, the brightest part is the eye and the darkest part is right next to it mm, and that will bring your eye to that part so again I accidentally turned on the highlights on the red metal again I will turn them off uh, anyway squinting your eyes will help you uh, figuring out forms as well in the earlier stages so if you squint your eyes uh, just uh, try and see where the colors and uh, values are I mean where the values are s happening because colors are starting to fade away and see what kind of uh, where, where you need to put shadows and highlights what I'm doing right now is uh, I decided to change up the color of the handle to blue because I think uh, there wasn't uh, the dagger needed a little bit more color to it. It was too monochrome. It was not interesting enough. And also, um, I move away from the concept right here and apply some 
other material to the tip of the dagger I mean the, the blade part of the dagger uh, to make it more interesting because on the concept I can already see it was a little bit dull because nothing happened basically on the dagger mm -hmm. on, the, on the blade side of the dagger but adding some straps in there it looks a bit more solid and mo more uh, personalized um, and it's generally just more interesting that way also it's a good idea to keep these things on a deeper, different layer uh, if sometimes something is overlapping something below it uh, so just so you can easily paint below um, below the straps example for example um, yep added some more uh, details just so the overall design is a bit more interesting I don't know really much about design I just look at it and I was like it's a bit too a bit boring so something needed to be done <laughs> and that's what I decided to do uh, adding some little bit of things uh, it was on a different layer again so it's easily deletable um, yes mm, basically the pipeline is this f big forms with light lighting in mind uh, f applying some nice color variations mm, bef beforehand and after that you have the big forms break them up into smaller ones mm, apply the same principles and ideas um, and after that um, this define the materials a little bit further like with highlights and stuff like that because you don't really su see uh, wood veins on metal but on the so small wood parts I painted in some veins that's gonna help uh, to a little bit to make it more um, easy to understand that it's wood I'm a little bit dried out right now I'm thirsty anyway yeah at uh, sadly at the end of the video I I mean not sadly I just didn't record the last hour or two um, because it was too experimental um, and uh, it uh, got, li got uh, a little bit out of hand <laughs> so I didn't record that part uh, but nothing uh, new is happening basically I apply the same principles I talked about um, just figuring out form putting in edges uh, to show where the geometry is turning uh, after that break up the surface detail and constantly keeping uh, eye out for happy accidents and design changes you can you can add to make your model more interesting and that's what basically I did at the end of the video which is not recorded but uh, right now I'm mm, I don't really know what I'm doing just rotating the model <laughs> painting in some scratches uh, to break up the form because I saw on the model uh, on the concept that it was more interesting on the concept than on the dagger so I just applied what I already discovered uh, in the concept and did it on the texture as well yep zooming out extremely important do it always and keep keep an eye out if uh, there is something some big mistakes going on with your model um, also if you hear a loud uh, humming voice in the background that's my 
seven or eight year old computer which is also the reason why I didn't really uh, record the <laughs> end of the video because it was really really just slowing the process down a lot because it was really weird <laughs> painting this way it was a little bit laggy <laughs> but anyway um, that also can tell you that you don't need a super computer to paint this kind of uh, textures <laughs> and also they will not be displayed in a next next can environment it's just some tradi traditional only a few stuff keeping it super simple <laughs> and super super uh, interesting <laughs> um, anyway I don't even see what is happening oh yes I believe I will put on some more details and uh, see where it's going to take me um, also um, it's a good idea to um, when you put on some highlights to erase it back a little bit so it will be more sharp um, that way um, because uh, I tend to paint the textures a little bit blurry a little bit uh, sometimes I get a little bit uh, messy with the textures and it's too blurry to understand and the details guess details get carried away but the big shapes are not really defined so that's a mistake uh, and uh, a, a problem I'm constantly fighting against but I think I'm on the winning side um, anyway just keep in mind um, your own strengths and weaknesses and always work on them if you can um, yeah, and uh, I am uh, um, <laughs> and I would also <laughs> recommend uh, recording your own workflow because uh, I also learn a lot from these kind of tutorials uh, I mean this kind of videos because I can see that I basically do the same stuff sometimes over and over again wasting valuable time but um, and I also discovered um, in in the past that I click a lot of things instead of using shortcuts but after watching my video and how I worked uh, I realized that I click too many times and I waste too much time with clicking so after that I just moved on with uh, uh, moved on to shortcuts and that's that uh, helped my workflow a ton so I would also recommend you just record it watch it back and maybe you will uh, si find something that you do again and again um, yes so basically this is it how how I think about uh, stuff when I'm working and uh, color variation as well is really really important uh, for me because uh, I I usually try and keep my assets interesting in color mm, and for that it's it's essential to mix the colors really well with each other yep zooming out again uh, flipping uh, flipping the model all around and figure out what kind of problems there are that needs fixing um, yep run out of things to say but anyway uh, basically same things mm, keep an eye out because um, ba basically at each part of the model and each part of the texture is going to uh, 
uh, have its own issues and own challenges. You just have to be patient and figure out what kind of light you want to place uh, there and how the light is hitting the model and just keeping it uh, as simple as possible as long as you can and then detail away like crazy. So yeah, this is my approach. I hope you learned something new from it and uh, mm, basically just apply the things you like, leave out the things you didn't um, and figure out your own workflow. I love to see your end result if you use this. Uh, so, you know, email me, comment, whatever you want uh, and then we will go from there. Hope you liked the video and see you later. Ciao.